the camera highlights in the world of sports. Baseball's Midsummer Classic finds more than 32,000 sweltering fans crowded into Sportsman's Park, St. Louis, with the American Leaguers rated 1-2 favorite to win the 8th annual All-Star Game. Cleveland's Bob Feller gets a fan slant from Joey Brown. But of what is about to happen, they have no idea. For it's in the first inning, Ruffing pitches to Herman. A sharp single to right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, the largest single-screen drive-in in the United States. We're certainly glad you could be with us this evening. And don't forget the concession stand is open with all kinds of great things to eat and drink. Welcome to Sean Spins. I'm your host, Sean, and this is episode 38, and I hope everyone is safe and well. We have an interesting episode today. We're actually going to be reviewing two things. We're going to be reviewing a Charlie Parker record, and we're going to be reviewing the Jean-Michel Basquiat show, King Pleasure. Before we get started, I just want to say that I hope our politicians do something about the gun violence here in the United States and just stop using just ridiculous excuses and do something about it. I tell you, I'm, I'm sick and tired of seeing political commercials here with politicians and guns and I'm, I'm tired of it. I am just sick and tired of it. And, you know, we need a serious change here in the United States. Well, let's get started on episode 38. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Sean, what made you put Charlie Parker, a bebop jazz musician, with Jean-Michel Basquiat? an artist and a musician about 40 years apart. Well, Jean-Michel Basquiat is a big reason, if not the main reason, I got into Charlie Parker. I've never really been into jazz, yet Jean-Michel Basquiat talked about Charlie Parker a lot. A big influence, loved his music. It even shows up in his artwork. So I slowly got into Charlie Parker way back, 20, 25 years ago. And recently I was at an art show in New York City for, for Jean-Michel Basquiat called King Pleasure. And they recreated his studio and part of the tour. There was a bunch of records there from Basquiat. The majority of them were Charlie Parker. Now Charlie Parker to me is just amazing. It's the only jazz musician I can say that when I listen to him, I actually play air guitar along with it. Just amazing. His playing is just groundbreaking. You know, it's just, it's like from another planet compared to other jazz musicians. So we're going to get started with Charlie Parker first, and then we'll get into Jean-Michel Basquiat with the art show. So the album I picked for Charlie Parker is this Warner Brother release called The Very Best of Bird. This came out in 1977. The cover is nothing special. When I first saw the cover when I got this way back, like 20 years ago, I thought it was from the 1980s because it's very simple. Yeah, it's from 77. The gatefold has a little bit more interest. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the back of it does break down, like, who plays on what along with the songs. It's a four-sided, two LPs. There is no rhyme or reason to the order it starts in 1947, then goes to 46, and then back to like 47 and whatnot. So it's not like it's based on age. I picked this one because it's a little bit of everything. And I got this album, I'm going to say, 2005, and I think I paid a quarter for it. You know, nobody wanted jazz records back then. And, uh, oh man, I enjoyed listening to it. So I It's great. I truly believe that Charlie Parker 
And I know some people might go, what, when I say this? But I really do believe Charlie Parker is the start of punk rock. Just a different style and great playing. My favorite part of this record set is Side 2. Has the side, uh, song Ornithology, which is just great because they play a similar part of the song and they take turns. It goes from like guitar to saxophone and they play the same riff. It's, it's amazing. And my other favorite thing is uh, song is Night in Tunisia. And the interesting thing about this set, it actually does a separate track of his famous alto break from that song. So before the song, you get that. So if you just want to listen to the solo, you can just listen to that part again and again and again. It's pretty cool. The solo is just unbelievable. Charlie Parker is a phenomenal musician. Now, I have read that after someone tossed a cymbal his way to the ground and you know, Charlie Parker began to practice a lot. Like, we're talking most of the day for, like, three years. And kind of reminded me of Jimi Hendrix. Like, Jimi Hendrix going everywhere with his guitar, including the kitchen and the bathroom. And they say the same thing about Charlie Parker, that he actually went to bed with his horn, too, and it stayed on the pillow next to him. And he really had a close relationship with his instrument and just became just a creative force. It's a real shame what happened to Charlie Parker and John michelle Basquiat with addiction. And I talk about it all the time. If you struggle in addiction, there's help and there's a better way to live. One of the interesting things I find about Charlie Parker is he actually spoke out about substances. And he said something interesting because sometimes you might hear musicians that think, or artists that think they're more creative if they're on substances. And he said the opposite, that you're not. And he talked about booze and he talked about drugs, that it doesn't work that way, that you're not more creative, that he's better without it. Now, Charlie Parker had a lot of health issues in his life, including he lost a child. It's great music. I do recommend this set if you're starting off. And I have seen that it's still fairly well-priced. So it's a great set to get started with with Charlie Parker. It's great music. Might surprise you if you're someone like me that didn't like jazz growing up and you might go, oh, it's interesting. And let's get into the art show now. So as I said, a couple weeks ago I was at the Jean-Michel Basquiat show King Pleasure in New York and it was just great. A lot of times when I see Basquiat at museums, it might be one or two pieces, little tiny drawings. This show was unbelievable. It was put on by his family. And it just had so much art. Not only did it have art, it had personal artifacts. And like I said, going back to the art, it wasn't just little drawings. It was big paintings. And I've never seen big paintings of Basquiat other than in just books. And seeing them in person is way different. The colors are a lot brighter, or they might even be a different color compared to the book. Now, the show starts off kind of at birth. You see a note from his father, and then you see like a birthing announcement for Jean-Michel Basquiat, and then you see like his card for the museum. It goes into like artwork he did growing up like in high school, because his style was a little different in high school. It was kind of more gesturely. You see a lot of the um, Andy Warhol portraits of the family, including Jean-Michel Basquiat. It goes into a separate room. That is a representation of the room he grew up in, like the living room, dining room. So it's like you're becoming part of the family. You go into the next big room, and there's a bicycle in there. And it was amazing to me that it was Jean-Michel Basquiat's bicycle. And it talked about how Basquiat would use the bicycle a lot because taxi drivers would not pick him up. And in that room, it had a lot of the big paintings. And a lot of the big paintings that were made from like found sticks and stuff by his apprentice. And I've always seen them in books, but I've never seen them up close and personal. And Basquiat is, you know, the, the story has been told that he found the stuff and asked the apprentice, can you, the apprentice assistant, can you make something with these? Well, seeing them in person, I was like, wow, they really were just put together really quick. These canvas structures. 
Next room I went into had like a refrigerator and it had like sketchbook drawings and note cards. It had a, another photograph from James Van Der Zien that I've never seen of Basquiat. Amazing. A lot of personal things. Little notes, notes about artists. Had a little funny note he wrote like Einstein was never asked to show slides. And I could relate to that from back in the day when they would always ask, can we see your slides if you're trying to be, get in an art show? So I love that little thing. Einstein was never asked to show his slides. As I said, personal things. Had a, a funeral card for Andy Warhol's funeral. It had the New York Times cover that Basquiat inscribed to his father. It was amazing. Had a lot of his personal uh, artifacts and things that he got from, and that he had in the studio. And to see all that, I was like, wow, like I've seen pictures of it, but to see a big display. Later on in the show, like I said, there's a remake of the studio and there's a TV with his VHS tapes and books and record player and artwork on the floor being worked on and standing up. The one record player, I had the same record player growing up. And as I said, a lot of the records in there, Charlie Parker. There's more artwork in the next room, like the Charlie Parker painting, a lot more jazz paintings. Just powerful pieces speaking out about what's going on at that time also. Not just Basquiat painting his heroes from the past, yet talking about what's going on. There's paintings with his friends. There's paintings, the little house with the S for Suzanne. It's great. The part with the studio was playing music too, like a lot of his favorite tracks. And a lot of those tracks were like 1980s music. Towards the end, they redid a nightclub that Jean-Michel Basquiat did huge paintings in. And they had the paintings there. And I was talking to the one security guard, because he was telling me too, a lot of the people thought the paintings were fake, that they were just copies in the nightclub. And they were real. And it looked like a real nightclub. It was like music blasting and chairs and everything. It was great. You know, Jean-Michel Basquiat has a really beautiful art style. Just flows for him with a lot of emotion. Let's get to the art. Sell peanuts, sell peanuts. Sell peanuts, sell peanuts. Sell peanuts, sell peanuts. Sell peanuts, sell peanuts. Sell peanuts, sell peanuts.
I can't say enough about the show. It was great, and it was so nice to see that much of Jean-Michel Basquiat's art. I think I took close to like 120, 150 photographs. I didn't even realize it until I left. And I said it really takes you on an adventure that you feel like you're in his life, you know, from childhood and even to like the artwork, like when he got hit by a car as a child and he lost his spleen and going into high school and then going into young adult and then to an older adult and then the artwork's getting bigger and changing and then, and it was fascinating and then like I said going into um his studio from the great Jones loft like the with his VHS tapes the records the paintings it it was it was really nice and like I said it it got me thinking about Charlie Parker again it's been a little bit since I've listened to Charlie Parker and since I got back from that show a couple weeks back, I've been listening to Charlie Parker a lot again. and been taking out this record in particular, and the music I put with the show is from a different performance with Dizzy Calypso. Just, it's great. It's great. It's my favorite kind of jazz, and it's one of my favorite forms of music. And Charlie Parker is just a big inspiration for me as, an, as a musician, and Jean-Michel Basquiat is a big inspiration for me as an artist. So that's it for episode uh, 38. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, hope everybody's safe and well and take care and be nice to each other. <laughs>